Hi everyone, we're back and today the topic for discussion is the new nurse, did you know that? And there are a lot of uh, topics that we can apply that question to, but today it's going to be first the patient in transphenoidal surgery. Here is a patient who's had surgical intervention. Typically the pituitary gland which lies in the base of the skull, transphenoidal surgery is done in that area of the brain. Now the posterior pituitary gland which produces which stores the antidiuretic hormone produced by the hypothalamus. If there's any interruption like through surgical intervention these patients might dump tremendous amounts of urine and the urine typically is very pale. The drug of choice is DDAVP which the doctor usually orders to correct this problem and it can be given through nasal spray, IV or sub-Q. Let's take a look at urine in general. Normal urine is clear yellow or amber, cloudy urine, sign of infection, blood in the urine may be a sign of infection, trauma or cancer. So there are lessons to be learned about urine as boring as it looks. Let's take the case of this patient in liver failure. He's developed renal failure as a result of his liver failure. And this is not uncommon with patients who have problems with the liver to also have renal failure. The liver has a tremendous amount of work to do. One of its problems, it also affects things like clotting factor. And patients who have liver problems might very readily have like blood draining from the mouth and decreased urinary output. Just clot problems with clotting in general because the liver produces clotting factors such as prothrombin and fibrinogen so they bleed more. Abdomen is distended, skin breakdown, you can see the horrible looking pedal edema jaundice. It's not a pretty picture but there is a lot to be learnt and it should not be overlooked. The urine typically of these patients is if they're in advanced liver failure is tea colored Sometimes they may not have any urinary output at all and they might have to have hemodialysis until a liver becomes available and a kidney as well. They are usually very sick and require a lot of attention but there is a lot to be learned so it should not be overlooked. Then we're going to talk about what exactly happens when a patient in liver failure and the liver has broken down not able to do its full load workload well, the patient becomes very lethargic, the damaged liver can no longer remove toxins such as ammonia which travel from the liver to the brain via the bloodstream and causes what is called an encephalopathy. Now this would be hepatic encephalopathy, hepatic referring to the liver. These toxins such as ammonia can travel to the brain and these patients become so lethargic they may require intracranial pressure monitoring. And on this very website, there is that topic, intracranial pressure monitoring, can be very helpful. An EVD, which is an external ventricular device, is placed in the ventricle by the doctor. And usually, there's an ex under sterile uh, conditions, there is a dressing applied on the outside, and the ICP is monitored per doctor's orders. So if you take the time to look at that topic, it will be very helpful. Now I'm going to reference a topic which nobody wants to hear about but it's as normal as breathing in and breathing out. It's called feces. The patient, I'm going to let you take, take a look at the different types of feces from normal to abnormal. Here is a patient saying to the nurse, nurse I've pooped in the bed. And how many nurses want to hear that? Not at all. You'd rather hear give me my injection. But you know what? It's as normal as breathing in and breathing out. And there's a lot to be learned from it. The nurse doesn't particularly like having to deal with feces, but there's nothing wrong with it. It is a part of the human body. So let's take a look at the different types of feces. First, the normal one is brown. It's normally brown and it is a product of the end products of digestion. Then let's take a look at the hard black pebbles and this might be due to constipation. Then we have the black tarry stools usually occurring from bleeding in the lower in the upper digestive tract. Then we have what is called melana which is uh, feces containing blood. The color is indicative of bleeding from the upper or lower digestive tract. Then we have that maroon burgundy stools. Like I said, it can be either way. Um, then we have those very black tarry stools I talked about. 
um, like pebbles and then of course we've got the green ones which might be caused by food coloring I don't think they use it much more but dyes in the stool and then you've got barium swallow which might also cause the stools to have a different appearance so there are lessons to be learned and I hope you have learned and appreciated the lessons to be learned have a great day